There was this TV show many years ago with Puff Daddy, or I should say P Diddy, please don't sue me. Anyways, he's in the studio and he's asking the engineer to turn up the kick drum. And the engineer pulls up a plug-in and he starts fiddling around with EQ. And Diddy gets mad. He starts to be like, dude, it's, it's not an EQ thing. Like just turn up the volume. And the engineer just keeps fiddling with the EQ. Diddy gets mad, he yells at him and he storms out of the studio. Now this clip really stuck with me and I wanna help you not make the same mistakes by doing things in the right order. And as mixers, we usually make things way too complicated, way too fast. Before we know it, we've been listening to a drum or a vocal track in solo for an hour, and we've got seven plugins on the chain, and we're starting to wonder if it sounded better before we did anything at all. And I think this is a problem of not knowing exactly what to reach for first when there's a problem or something isn't sitting right in the mix. You know, should we go hunting with EQ and, and notch out all the problem frequencies? Should we try compressing it? Should we add effects like reverb? Should we, should we pan it and should it be wide or should it be uh, just a, a small panning move? And sometimes we end up taking a sledgehammer to a tiny problem. And instead we need to slow down, simplify the process and make a thoughtful decision about what kind of processing a track really needs. And funny enough, the most powerful and simple tool we have is often the last thing we reach for when processing a track. I'm talking about the volume fader. So instead of doing a whole bunch of processing and then trying to find the final balance with the fader, the first thing you should try is changing the volume. Bring up the fader so you can hear the part clearly in the context of the mix and then identify what it needs. So let's say you bring up a guitar track and you can hear it clearly and everything, but you just don't like the tone. Well, then you can use EQ and shape the tone how you want. Or maybe you turn it up and the tone is fine, but you can't really hear all the nuance and detail and certain parts of it are getting buried in the mix. Well, then you'd wanna use compression to bring it more up front and bring up all those low level nuances and details so it doesn't get lost. Other times the tone and the dynamics might sound okay, but it's just making your mix too crowded. Well, then you can reach for the next simple tool, which is the pan knob, and you can try to create space that way. Or if that doesn't work, then you can try EQ to, to limit the frequency range of that instrument so it's not stepping on other tracks, or you can make a boost somewhere to help it cut through a dense mix. But if you start EQing and compressing things without really listening first, you're gonna make the wrong moves. And instead, you should use the volume fader as your first tool when making processing decisions. Okay, let me show you this concept in action. So in this song here, we've got a Rhodes piano that comes in the bridge. Okay, so without soloing, we're gonna turn this up. Okay, I can hear it clearly in the mix now, but what I'm noticing is that when the chord hits, you hear it, but then it dies. So what I wanna do first is add compression to squish down that initial uh, chord hit and bring up the sustain. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll use the SSL channel. Let's go four to one, fast attack. We'll start with a fast release. And there's no makeup gain, so we'll have to turn this up a bit. All right, so now I can hear the sustain and the ring out of that chord way clearer. But to me, I would still like this to, to sound a bit brighter and more polished when those chords hit. So let's boost some top end. Let's put the compressor after EQ. Okay, much better. Now the last thing I'm hearing is I, I, I think it could take up more space. It could just be a little fatter, especially in the mid range and the, the lower mid range. Now I could try doing that with EQ. I kind of like using saturation for that role. So I'm gonna pull up this uh, saturation plugin called Escalator and let's see how that sounds. Okay, so now instead of having a chord that just quickly dies out, we can hear the initial chord, but then we also hear the sustain 
all the way through and it takes up the space that it needs to in the mix. So as a final step, let's just take it out and use the fader to put it back in. I want you to notice something else about what I did there. Now, when you identify a problem in the mix or a change that you wanna make, go big first. What I mean is if you need to make an EQ move, then don't start by zooming in and making a whole bunch of these tiny little notches. Like if something is too dark, then just grab the high end and crank it. Or if there's a really honky mid range, then go ahead and make an aggressive cut. And when you do that, you'll actually end up finding out what it needs and, and landing in the sweet spot a lot faster. And a lot of people make the mistake of combing through their mix with a magnifying glass and trying to find all the little problem areas and, and get rid of them. And they're afraid of making big moves because they don't want to introduce a new problem in the mix. And all that gets you is a super boring mix. And look, I certainly do make small moves in my mixes. Sometimes just a couple extra dB of compression or just a one dB cut or boost on EQ makes a huge difference. But that's only at the end of the mix. Try to think of this like a funnel. You wanna start with big moves and take actions that make a really big difference. And then as you get closer to finishing the mix, then your moves are gonna get smaller and smaller and they'll have more of an impact and you won't have wasted a ton of time making all these tiny pointless moves. It's very much like a sculptor who's gonna start by chipping away big chunks of rock and then towards the end, he's gonna be adding all those little fine details. And this whole process is gonna repeat itself throughout the mix. You're gonna process all the tracks, then you'll go back and you'll keep refining them over and over. But as you go through that process, try to train yourself to always start with the volume every time. Now, I can't tell you how many times I've been stuck on a mix struggling with, let's say the bass track and trying all this fancy processing and different plugins to try and make it sound bigger and fatter and more full. And then finally, I just grab the volume fader, turn it up a few dB and boom, the problem is solved and I didn't have to do any more processing at all. So that volume fader should be your new best friend. Don't think of it like the final adjustment. It is your first and most powerful weapon when attacking mix problems. Hey, if you haven't been doing that, there's a good chance that you're overthinking and second guessing your mix way too much. It's very common, but if that's the case, you definitely wanna check out this video to see how you can win the mix battle that's happening in your own mind.